welcome, welcome, one and all, all of you fine Rika and Oscar Flom owners out there. Thanks for tuning in to what Julie and I believe is the number one uh, internet site for troubleshooting your Oscar Flom or your Rika. And today, this is another short on how to locate your air sensor on your stove and how to remove it to inspect it. So let's get right to it, shall we? Okay, this is the Osterflom Integra 1, which uh, many of you recognize. And uh, for you Rika owners out there, it's pretty much identical. It's, uh, your air sensor is located on the right side of the stove. So when you're facing the stove on the right hand side, uh, you normally have your colored panel right here in front. And you insert uh, owners, nothing here. Uh, in the way of covering the back end because this portion slides inside of the fireplace. Alrighty, for you out there that have freestanding models, you do have a panel that's right here. And if you uh, check out our how to remove uh, the panels on my stove, then you will see exactly what's going on there. Again, both models, your fresh air tube, your air sensor sits right here and basically the computer board drops down inside of the tube and it measures the air intake that comes in either from an outside connection or from the internal air of your home. First off, I wanna say before you do anything, which I've mentioned on many, most of my videos, is that you wanna unplug the stove. When you start disconnecting wires and so forth, you're going to end up uh, having the possibility of maybe grounding something out if it's plugged in or possibly, uh, you know, having a, a little jolt or shock, which uh, isn't always pleasant. So just go ahead and unplug it. So the first thing that we're going to do after we locate the air sensor. So you're going to grab yourself a 5 uh, socket. Be very careful not to hit the computer board. Back at your screws. And as you can see, I've already pretty much loosened it up just for the sake of trying to get right to it. Okay, when you take out the last one, hang on to the air sensor. And you're going to want to lift it out very carefully. Alrighty. Now, this is, this is my bad air sensor, which I always use in my videos because it's a great uh, example of a bad air sensor, okay? They don't always end up like this, showing an obvious sign. Uh, a lot of times we'll have to test them in order to determine if the air sensor is bad. But after you remove the screws, never touch the green flat portion of the uh, fiber board, okay? because electrostatic can blow the components on the board. Always grab it like so, and uh, you should be fine. So when you inspect it, the first thing that you want to do is you're going to want to look for burn marks on the board or underneath here. Wow, look at that. Put it down here with the white palette so you can see it better. You can see how this one here is torched. Alrighty, both sides, it burnt all the way through. This is an obvious bad air sensor. They're not always going to look like this. And again, once again, we will have to test them a lot of time to determine if they're bad. All right. Underneath the bracket here, you have <clears throat> gasketing insulation. If you do not have it or like this one here, see how it's seriously compressed down. There's no more sponginess to it. Give us a call and we'll sell you a foot of it. We have to sell it by the foot. So you're going to always want to make sure that this insulation uh, is intact and it's spongy. So when you mount it down, it's going to squish and have a nice seal to it. Also, you're going to want to install it to where it's tight up against the fiber board. You can see there's no gaps. And when you put the new on, these holes are obviously aren't going to be there. So your screw will pop through the new and give it a nice seal. All right. You know, if you're going to clean it, do not take a cloth, do not use any type of 
uh, cleaner in any way and spray it on the board. The only way that this it should be cleaned is through high pressure air. You can get it, you know, Office Depot or, or wherever, Walmart, whatever. And the high pressure, just give it a good uh, uh, cleaning with the high pressure, blow everything off. And that's pretty much all that's necessary in order to clean the air sensor. Then once it's time to put it back in, just be careful that the portion that goes down into the air tube here, uh, you don't want to drag it. You want to try to keep it off of the air tube, but if all possible, put it back, reset the screw. Now, because I do have this apart, um, I don't have the wire here that's coming and connecting to it. But when you disconnect this wire here, do not pull on the wires, okay? The male portion of this connector that is connected to the wires, that's what you want to grab onto. And you just want to wiggle it and pull it up and off. Be very careful that you do not pull the wires out of the connector because then it becomes a major inconvenience and you're going to have to get a hold of us and we're going to have to hook you up and help you get it all back together. All right. So, that's all we really got to say about the air sensor. That quick, that easy. So, if you guys need any parts or any troubleshooting advice, email us at offgridstoves at gmail.com. We'll normally get back to you within, you know, a couple of hours uh, because it does go right to our phone. If you do not have a way to email us and you have to call us, give us 24 hours to respond. Uh, due to the fact that we are so busy from September to March. Um, after March, not so much. So, 800-348-1021. Stay safe. Peace.